she's one of South Africa's favorite daughters, and she's arguably the greatest female breaststroke swimmer of all time. Well, joining me on the couch, Penny Haynes. Penny, thank you so much for joining us on the couch today. Penny, you were born in South Africa. You, I read somewhere that at the age of three, you started swimming just in the backyard. Mm -hmm. Who was it that encouraged you at that young age to actually get in the pool and start swimming? Well, I think, um, obviously I can't remember that far back, but I do, um, it might have even been younger, I'm not really sure, but my mother, I'm the oldest of three kids and got two younger brothers and my mom, you know, you can't, I was born in Springs, moved down to Manzatoti when I was a year old, so you can't be on the beach and on the coast without learning to swim. And so she taught me to swim. I do kind of have some recollection of that. And it was obvious, I think in those years, there was this, a program, Man from Atlantis. Yes, um, I remember and, that. And uh, I know my younger brother is two years younger than me, the middle one. Um, we were doing the Man from Atlantis thing underwater and that kind of stuff. So that, you know, we were just really water babies and, and then did nippers and all of that. Didn't really take on serious uh, school swimming until well probably at class two mm -hmm. but not serious swimming i only joined a club when i was about 13. So. because then you became the, the captain of the swimming team do you at some stage in your mm -hmm. in your school career um was it at this point where you thought there's something special about me no i think it was before that i mean i do remember we were swimming in the in the pool at home and the neighbor was saying to my mom because i was racing a boy two years older than me <laughs> that I'm pretty fast, they should let me swim for school. But the school team only started in standard one and I was right. in grade three now and I was in class two. So I had to challenge the older girls and at the Toti Beach Pool, that saltwater pool, and I won. And then it became evident, I think around my standard three year when I was about, I suppose, 10 years old, that I could compete on the South Coast in Natal. As for captaincy, my position on the school team per se was not really the influence. It was obvious that at that when you start swimming club, you're competing against some serious um, swimmers and then right. it became obvious that I had a talent for swimming. Now living in South Africa, I mean at that stage there was no competing on the international mm -hmm. stage. I mean did we even, did you even know about the Olympics at no, that you see, point I, in time? I speak to people now, if you speak to Ray Kniertling and obviously he's a bit younger than me and but even swimmers that were my age, they had this Olympic dream, they'd been watching this stuff on TV and mm -hmm. I don't know where I was in La La Land. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't but, a reality at the time, Penny. No, and so the first time I actually really thought about the Olympics was when they were pretty much announcing the team at the Olympic trials in Durban um, in March of 92. And my focus at that time was really getting done with my matric year. I was head girl at that stage and there was an integration, move, you know, the movement with the schools integrating. So there was a lot of time and effort going into that and introducing the idea to particularly the Indian schools in the Isapingo area. So I was a little bit, uh, you know, not so focused on my swimming. And then I made the team for Barcelona and suddenly, you know, realized that I've got to swim internationally. It didn't swim well at all. Even though you say that you didn't do that well, yeah. you know, you did get your bursary. To no, go definitely. study at Nebraska. What actually happened is at the, you see the previous year in 91, in my stand nine year, I won the 100 and the 200, broke the SA record in the 100 and that was good enough to qualify for Springbok Colors and actually did my best times at that stage. And then the following year with the Olympic trials, I didn't swim my best times, but as it turned out, I made the team. Now, one of the coaches from Nebraska was at Nationals and approached us and um, offered me the scholarship and I said no, because I'd never even considered it. And right. the girls who had gone abroad prior to me had pretty much um, gone for a season or so and then come back. They didn't oh, really follow okay. it through. So the perception we had those days is that going to the States was not good for the female swimmers. Right. The male swimmers were performing well. And uh, so I said no to the scholarship. And I didn't know, but I didn't pay attention to the Olympic team. I thought I'm not gonna be picked. And so here I was picked and I was sort of stuck all of a sudden with the idea of having to continue swimming. And then the idea grew on me that perhaps, you know, I was kind of raised with my mom always saying that, first of all, you're born for a purpose. You're gifted, um, you know, your creator has gifted you because there's a plan and a purpose. And I had this sense of responsibility throughout my, since the age of seven really, that I've got to produce the best that I can be on the day. So that someday when I retire from swimming or whatever it is in life, when I stand before my maker, I can know I did the best I, I, did with, I could with the talents. And so having that mindset, I realized when I thought about the scholarship thing again that if I, if I don't take that opportunity, I'll forever wonder what if. And so I think if I remember correctly, my coach at the time then, without me knowing it, contacted the States again and said to them, look, they, he thinks they should ask me again because I might change my mind. 
and oh, he planted the seed. So he was so, a, a catalyst. Yes, he catalyst. really was. And that's something I must say is uh, there's not a lot of South African coaches that would do that. There are a few great guys that I, that I'm, and, and female coaches that will send their swimmers abroad, but there are those that also will really fight to keep them young. That's actually, quite honestly, very selfish. But do you think, Penny, going abroad, if you look at the likes of Red Nettling and Roland Schumann, they also went abroad. Yes. They also went to the States to study and to train. And do you think, as a South African, that's really the only way to success, is to be exposed on the international stage in terms of comp um, competing? Mm. I think I want to be safe and actually say, and I think this is an honest assessment, that I don't think it's just you, it's not, it's not just South Africans that will benefit. I mean, really... People misunderstand, they think that, or the coaches anyway, they feel it's a personal thing that we think they can't coach us and therefore we must go to the States. The big thing about the States is that it's a very unique system. People from all over the world, um, a lot of European swimmers in particular, also go to the States on scholarship. So you have this dynamic where you're competing on a, on a, every second weekend, you're competing against some of the top swimmers in the right. world, or right. runners or whatever it may yeah. be. The system is such that it really nurtures and mines all the potential out of the individual. And America is producing the best results worldwide because they're opening their doors to the rest of the world. So, you know, I always think if you're helping someone else be their best, you're going to also improve. So there's this dynamic that exists there. And um, I really believe that any sport, if you get the opportunity, any person, if you have that opportunity to go abroad to the States and study there and, and swim, run, whatever it may be, you should take that. Because it may not be that in your sport per se that you're going to improve that much, but the life experience. Yeah, and I just think it's just such an opportunity. You can't miss it. And I think we can certainly produce the results here. Yeah? We've seen it with Terence Parkin. Um, and we've had, I'm try I really struggled to think who else, actually, to be honest. The rest of us who've produced medals all were training abroad. Exactly. There's some great talents now, currently, if I talk specifically to swimming, that probably could medal in some of events that you'd go up against Michael Phelps, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I'll probably be crucified for saying this, but I think this particular swimmer, um, he will be great if he trains here and continues with his coach. But I, I think he'll be even better if he just has that exposure abroad. Mm -hmm. And sad to say, this particular coach is not going to let this woman go. So your advice is go abroad if you get the opportunity. Definitely. Expose yourself on the international stage. Compete internationally. Yes, yes. To be the best that you can Grow be. as a person. And, you know, and I, I don't know if it's right for me to say this now, but people will say, well, how do I do this now? You can only do that if you're the best in the country. And I just want to say that's not true. Um, I work with the coaches who used to coach me. They now have a company in the States where they help and assist people get, to get scholarships. And they... They're probably the best or top recruiting company in the States right now. And I was just talking to one coach that even, you know, the Americans have Division One, which is like the Ivy League and the top schools. Then you have Division Two. So I'm saying if someone, and this is not just for swimming, it's for all, there's various sports. But if you um, are good enough to just qualify for senior nationals, but you're not, you're never going to actually even make the finals per se. There's a very good chance you could get a scholarship though to a Division Two, a Division Two school. You might improve and then be able to move up. Or at least, the very least, you have that opportunity to study abroad. So um, on my website, there's a link, and they can do yeah. a free profile. And yeah. But now I want to talk to you going back to Nebraska. This okay. is where you met your coach, Jan. Yes. Was there an immediate, you know, attraction to say this no. guy knows what he's doing and he's going to help me <laughs> no. with my success? No. It's what happened is. Um, Jan is originally of Czech Republic, yeah. then he defected to Sweden, swam for Sweden. At the 92 Barcelona Olympic Games, he was actually a competitor there himself. I didn't, apparently I met him there, but I don't remember. And, um, and I was this nerdy little kid on the team. And he had gone to Nebraska, he was swimming for them, and then because he was a graduate student, he was assisting. But he wasn't working with the group I was in when I initially got there. Then what happened, and as far as I know, stories that I've heard since, he used to think I, I was a... Uh, you know, a baby in terms of the kind of mileage oh. I could do and oh. everything. He was like, right. I'm a softie. Okay. And so when I got back um, to my second year in Nebraska, um, after the summer break, when I arrived there, they informed me I'm the only female breaststroker on the team. There's two male breaststrokers, they're both from uh, Sweden, so Jan's going to coach them. But I'll flip between the sprint team and sometimes do some workouts with them. And so I was just in the middle of nowhere. And I, in the meantime, had worked on my stroke, had set my goals, knew exactly how I'm going to achieve those goals the following year. And somebody must help me, but that's what I'm going to do. That was yeah. my mindset. So when I went to the States and um, I was in a position where Jan was the only guy to take a fellow South African to the airport. So I went with. And in the, in, on the way back, we had this conversation. And 
he basically was telling me that I shouldn't even try and swim with him because I'm not going to be able to do his workouts. So I said to him, well, this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to do it and I need someone to help me. Yeah, and yeah, you have yeah. an opportunity, yeah, do you want... And at that point, he'd never coached anyone really before. This was his first season as well. But he came out of that mold of you do this heavy mileage, this tough male yeah. swimming thing. And I told him how I'm going to do it and he said, okay, if you give 100%, I'll give 100%. So then I moved over to him and as it turned out, those two male swimmers got injured. So for a whole season, it was only me that he coached. And right. I think we really started this journey together as coach and swimmer. Um, and we grew together and how Jan coaches today and how he ended up coaching me is vastly different from the way he trained as a swimmer himself. So. Obviously you've now got this relationship, you've got this recipe for success. He moves now to Canada. Where did that leave you and how did that affect your performance at the time? Okay, that was sort of a chicken and egg situation in the sense that uh, it was as a result of the success we had. You know, we went to um, Atlanta, won the double gold and everything went with that. And then the Canadians, you know, approached him and said, listen, would you want to come over to Canada? And they came and asked me, you know, is he on a good coach? Do I recommend him? All that stuff. Yeah. So because I said yes and endorsed him so strongly. You lost him. Yeah, they, and he <laughs> moved there. But I think they all said in their mind, if he moves, I'll move. And, and essentially that's what it came down to. That was the deal on the table. I didn't want to go to Canada. I didn't want to go to America. But I went anyway, and I didn't think it was about swimming. I thought it was just some kind of test. And then when I got there, when I had a bit of an attitude adjustment, and um, then that sort of started falling together over time. And then I had the most amazing, uh, you know, three months of my swimming career, unimaginable. And um, like I say, sometimes I just want to say the lesson in that that I take and that I also share with, with um, people is that Often we find ourselves in that deep slump and we really cannot imagine the silver lining mm. or the light at the end of the tunnel. And, um, but sometimes we just have to really follow our gut feel and obviously in my case it's a prayerful thing. If someone doesn't approach it that way, I honestly don't know how they go about it then. But following my gut feel and going by faith, um, it ended up being a mind-blowing situation. So what I just want to say is I think my conclusion after 10 years of retirement, after swimming also and having found it the same in life, is that you don't really heat, reach those mountaintop experiences without really first going through a valley. Right. And it's those lessons you learn in the valley, in the moment there, in the really tough situations where you actually just want to give up. If you can just push through that, it catapults you to the next level. And I, I want to go as far as to say that I don't believe you can be successful truly successful if you don't first go through a whole lot of failure. That's true, isn't it? They say life is a school. Yeah. We had to learn lessons.